Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jared, and today we are going to go back to 2003. Well, actually, we're going to go back to 2008, but this whole thing started in 2003. Let me explain. Oh, ho, ho, it's getting cold in Ireland. I don't know where you are, but it's getting cold. Okay, so, about two weeks ago, I had a conversation with a really good friend of mine. Very nerdy conversation. We were talking about the different operating systems and how technology has changed so much, literally over the last 20 years. Every application now has some sort of built-in AI version or, I don't know, It's just it just seems much easier to use and it, things are just much easier than what they used to be back whenever I started in IT. I first started in IT back in 2008 and I worked for a company called SLA Networks and that company was soon bought over by CMI and so I spent three years in that company. My role there was an on-site project engineer so what I would do is I would go on-site and help them with their servers or network firewalls basically just be like an IT guy that would go out to different businesses. Now the first two years whenever I started in SLA Networks I knew nothing. I was so green I didn't know anything about servers or networks or totally anything at all. So I spent the first couple of years on a help desk learning everything, learning how to speak with customers, learning server infrastructure, Active Directory, Exchange, basically starting from scratch and trying to figure everything out. So SBS 2003 was the first server operating system that I ever used. So today we are gonna build the SBS 2003 from scratch. I found the ISO, I have a working product key so we can at least build the operating system and see what it looks like. This is the archive.org website. This is where you will get the ISO for the SPS 2003. I'll put this in the description so you can get it too. I've downloaded this already. I have uploaded the ISO to Proxmox. So all we have to do is just get started by creating the VM. Now let's click up here, create VM. I'm gonna give this SPS 2003. Now you do need to follow some of these options because it is such an old OS. Some of these are quite different. So I am going to select the ISO 2003 that I downloaded. I'm going to change this guest to Microsoft Windows. I'm going to drop this to XP 2003. I click next. I'm going to leave all this stuff as default. For the data drive, I'm just going to change this and I'm going to just give it 100 gig. Leave all of this as default as IDE. Click on next, CPU, I'm just gonna up this to two cores. I'm gonna leave it like that. Go next again. RAM, I'm gonna give it eight gig, 8192. Then let's go next. Now for network, I'm gonna change this to VMBR1. This is basically a, just a separate network and stuff. So this is gonna put this server behind the PFSense firewall that I've built. So click on that one and then click next and then click finish. So let's just click on start now. Let's get started with running this VM. Okay, let's go. So let's hit enter. That's gonna continue. We wanna to agree to the licensing. So click on F8. Then we're gonna go through the format. So hit enter again. And then oh, remember this, the quick option. <laughs> let's hit up and do that. If I can remember right, this used to be, I think this bit was quite slow. I can't remember. Seeing this actual loading screen brings back a lot of memories as well. So this is gonna take another 40 minutes. I'm probably gonna forward all of this bit on so we can get to the next bit. So this screen is where you add all of your regional settings. This is where you can change your language. I remember just flying through this. This is madness. I'm gonna leave this all as default. I have a US based keyboard here, so I'm just gonna leave it as US. I'm gonna leave all that, yeah. And just click on next and we will I'm just gonna call this business. Then I'm gonna go in here. Now I have to enter the product key. Where am I gonna get a product key? Remember you used to get the little, the little paper booklet and had the product key on at the back of it. Now I have found a product key online. Um, again, I'm just gonna use this uh, for a test. Uh, I'm not gonna really activate this or do anything with the server. I'm gonna delete it after. So if you don't have a key, I would just suggest that you Google and you'll find the link, it's on GitHub. I might even put it in the description. We'll see, hopefully Microsoft doesn't chase me. <laughs> is it gonna work, is it gonna work? Yes, it is. Computer name, I'm gonna change this to SBS 2003 and then this is where you set the admin password. 
again, there's no kind of, there's no like minimum requirements here at all. <laughs> this is back when nobody cared. So just put your password in there, um, computer name, hit next. And this should then continue on with the rest of the build. Six and a half hours later. So we are finally at the login screen. That took an eternity. That took all day to do that build. Those bits you just seen, I recorded them first thing this morning. And this is literally in the evening time now. So hopefully this is worth it. Let's go in here. We're gonna log in and let's see what else we have to do. I know we do have to run through a number of different wizards whenever we get in here. There is one huge long part of the install which includes all of the optional stuff like exchange that runs through the install. Let's change this resolution first of all and make it a bit bigger. It's a bit better. Hopefully you guys can see that as well. Range button, yeah. Okay, cool. So this is the UI. Wow. Let's go in. We're going to check the network connections. So let's just see what we have. We've got nothing. So let's just give this a static IP address. So I'm going to give this an IP address in my test network. 255.0. The gateway is going to be 10.10.100.254. The DNS I'm actually going to set to itself. So 10.10.100.10 .10 .10 .10 and this is just going to be Google. Not the best thing to use an external DNS there, but it'll be okay for now. Cool. Okay. So do we have internet access? It is quite fast. We do have internet access. Happy days. Okay. Generally, I'm supposed to get something up on the screen here like an install option i don't know why that's not that's not happening let's just give this another quick reboot remember this you have to put a comment in here no it is weird saying sbs 2003 let me know in the comments if you also started out your career on sbs 2003 what was your biggest pain for me it was storage there was never enough storage on these servers i don't know why every time that everybody built these you always run out of storage and then what would happen you would go low in storage you couldn't print your exchange would just fall over then you'd be struggling moving page files all over the place it was a mess once you get logged into the server this screen will eventually load it does bring you through a number of different things that we have to configure next so once you just click on next you do need to acknowledge these warning messages. It's going to tell you that you only have one network adapter and it's going to say that your paging file size is insufficient. That's fine. Just click acknowledge that and we can go next. You can skip all of this stuff here. We don't really need that right now. So this bit is going to ask you about configuring your local domain name and also the server name. Now, once you click next here, it just goes off and installs a whole bunch of stuff. It does exchange. It does active directory. It does all the server manager stuff. It does remote desktop services. Now that does take about three hours to do that whole install. The good thing is I have already done that. I have another SPS server that I've built and I built it yesterday and I ran through all of that wizards. So once the other server has done all of that installs and it reboots, this is what you get. You get this complete the configuration wizard. And this is, this was one of the beauties of SPS 2003. It's all wizard driven. And I genuinely think this was designed this way so business owners could easily do a lot of this stuff themselves. Now there is some steps that we have to do. So, and then again, I love that there's a tick box to say it's done, it's so funny. So if we go down here, we click on connect to the internet. Now this is behind a firewall and it does have internet access. So again, broadband dial up, that's hilarious. So let's click on next. Broadband, a, a local router device with an IP address, that's fine. Is it a direct broadband? I can't even remember anymore. Yeah, it's fine. Click next. Preferred DNS is going to be um, 10.10. I'll do this server. This one is actually .20. I'll do the local IP address of router 10.10.100.254. Okay, next. This server IP address is not valid. Oh, hold on, I think this is external, yeah. 
DNS server, that's my okay, probably ISP. <laughs> okay, I click on next. And uh, yeah, just click yes there. No, I don't want to see that. Configure email and internet connection wizard. What? This is insane. I'm just gonna go next. Create a certificate. So now it's asking us to create a certificate. This is a cert for this server. I'm just gonna use the server name, which is SBS. 2003.small business.local. Let's see if that actually works. It does work. Um, do I want to enable internet email? Oh my god, remember this. You used to have to get pop three connectors. Uh, I'm just gonna go enable, yeah. Use DNS, okay, that's fine. Use Microsoft Exchange, pop three connector. <laughs> we will look at exchange after. Click next. Domain name is small. This is your small business at local. You want to go next again and finish. That's going to go through all of the network configuration and firewall configuration and the SSL cert and email configuration. That's amazing. Okay, close. That is done. I don't want to set password policies. Not right now, but I could, but I'm not going to do it yet. The server is now connected to the internet. We highly recommend that you protect the server by installing the latest critical and security updates. That's going to be quite a lot of updates. Okay, let's go back to this. I'm going to tick this little tick box to say that one's done. Do I want to configure remote access? Uh, that's client licenses, activate the server, add a printer, user computer. Okay, there's lots of stuff here that we can do. Let's go and see if we can configure remote access. Tick that. Okay, remote access wizard, here we go. VPN. <laughs> I'm just, oh, that was simple. Just a couple of click next and finish, job done. Close. No, I wanna click on these ones, that one's done. Add a printer, add a user and computer. Okay, right, look, I'm gonna skip the wizard, right? I'm gonna go, cause I'm, I'm kinda dying to go into exchange and see what it looks like. So let's go to, actually let's open server manager first. Oh my God, I forgot what this looked like. This just totally makes sense. To-do list, that is the stuff that we just had. IIS. It just has everything you need to do in one place, isn't it? Like why did they change so much stuff when it was already amazing? Let's go to exchange now. Exchange, system manager. Wow. I used to do a lot of SPS migrations, migrating off SPS 2003 to the likes of 2008 and 2011. I just remember getting stuck so many times and things just falling apart. There was the pop three connect, I remember that. What used to happen is that Users would go on to their web-based email and reset their password and then it would stop working here because you used to have to put in username and your password. You would tell it what server had to reach out to to get your email and then you would just select the account you wanted it to go into here. It's so simple. <laughs> That's right, there was a schedule to pick up email as well. Oh my God. Public folders. I don't ever really use public folders. Anytime I've done migrations, I used to always skip them because it used to take too long. SMTP connector. That's how you would send the email out. You would use a relay. You would send it to somewhere else that had a better reputation than you did and then they would forward it on for you. Otherwise, you used to go on blacklists. Remember blacklists? This is crazy. Let's have a look at Active Directory. I doubt it's really changed that much. Yeah, it still looks the same. Obviously now it's way more advanced, but. You, let's go add an user. Let's put in some details here. Oh yeah, we'll take you through the, the mailbox creation as well at the same time.
I go back to exchange now, would it show me mailboxes? Maybe it didn't actually work. It's been so long since I've actually done this. It's been years since I've been sort of like an, an infrastructure sort of admin person. So it's good to kind of go back and play around with this stuff. Now this is running pretty fast. Back in 2008 when I was using, the, using this, the server was just running like dog slow. It would take you like 10, 15 minutes and you'd have somebody on the phone. They were saying they couldn't get logged in. I used to be losing my mind. But well, there you go. That's that's the video. That's what I wanted to make. I wanted to build SBS 2003, sort of get a bit nostalgic and look through the whole UI and Exchange and Active Directory and yeah, just it's kind of good to remember all of the old stuff that you used. I put all the details to the ISO and stuff so you can build this yourself. I did Google for a product key to build this. Like I'm not going to activate this. Um, you can Google the SBS 2003 product key, you'll probably find one yourself anyway. But there you go, if you liked the video, please consider subscribing because it really, really helps. And I will see you next time.